Okay, so now let's learn about some of the new capabilities at 10.5 that uh, we all can use to turn data into insights with spatial analysis. Again, to set the context here, I'm gonna talk about the language of spatial analysis, and then we'll actually get to see this technology at work at 10.5. So in your folders that you have, you have this poster. It's called the language of spatial analysis. Uh, Esri developed this about three years ago. This is a great tool. I would, ex I would um, suggest that you put this on the wall in your office or in a conference room or a meeting room. It's a great way to help you remember all the different ways that you can use GIS uh, to do spatial analysis. And again, the reason GIS exists is to, cr is to do spatial analysis, and that's some of the ultimate return on investment you could get is by applying that technology that no other technology can do, is analyzing your data. It's interesting because a lot of us get into the GIS as a profession because we're intrigued with how cool spatial analysis is, then we get jobs and we don't do it, right? <laughs> it's really weird. I, and I can attest to that. So I edited sewer and storm drain structure for four years. The vetrified clay pipe is like my friend. I never once did spatial analysis on any of the data sets yeah. after four years. Yeah, and so you know we spend a lot of time managing data, right? Collecting it, updating it, and all that. We need to spend the same amount of time and effort and money analyzing it. I mean, that's the why it's there. So it's, it, the other thing is to get un, other people in your organization to understand that the value of spatial analysis and the capabilities of what you can provide. Because most people that aren't GIS professionals, they hear GIS and they think MAP. Those are the people that make the maps, right? I need a map, I go to them, right? They don't know how the cool stuff that you could be doing, right? So that's why they're not asking for it. So you've got to market those capabilities to those people so that they understand when they ask for a map, ask them why they need it, dig a little deeper, find out if there's an opportunity for spatial analysis, give them a web map instead of a paper map or a PDF, you know, kind of be this agent of change. And so this poster can help with that. You can actually show this to others and help explain to them what spatial analysis can do for them in, in easy language. So first of all, it has a definition in there. It's how we understand our world. It's mapping where things are, how they relate, what it all means and what actions to take. And then there's benefits on here. And I think we don't talk about or think about the benefits enough. A lot of times somebody comes to you and says, Adam, I need to know where to put the next fire station. Okay, and you go ahead and do it without thinking about what are the benefits of what I'm about to do and what could I provide above and beyond this. And so look at the benefits there. Um, this is the process. We ask questions, we explore data, we analyze and model it, we interpret results. A lot of times we don't do the right thing right away, so we try several different things, so we repeat it, and then we present the results. So presenting the results, story maps. Think story maps instead of paper and, and PDF. You can create a story map as fast as you can create a PowerPoint slideshow. And use that, and then you give people the URL, and then they can interact with it afterwards. But then make a decision. If we do analysis and nobody makes a better decision from it, we're doing analysis because analysis is fun, right? So we always want to drive some results and some benefits with a decision. And then lastly is the vocabulary. There's all kinds of questions we can answer that are listed on your poster. There's six major categories here from just understanding where things are by showing them on a map, from measuring the size, shape, and distribution so I can measure where all the wetlands are in a county or a city and see their, their shape and their distribution. We can determine how different places are related. Do I want to move to this neighborhood or that neighborhood? Uh, we can find the best location and path. I mentioned the fire station thing. That's, that's one of the a foundational capability. But also the path, and not just how do I get from here to the airport, but I've got 50 inspections that need to be done today. I've got three inspectors, which is the best um, set of uh, inspections for each inspector, and put it in an efficient route so that they can get it done quickly. Right now, that efficient routing, I guarantee you people are doing it up here or they're doing it on paper. Um, and you could do that right now with a spreadsheet and a web browser with ArcGIS, and they don't have to be a GIS professional. So you talk about low-hanging fruit and, again, unlocking some value. That most efficient routing is really good. Uh, UPS implemented um, some new capabilities in our technology, and they're saving over $400 million a year by cutting down on left turns because left turns are not efficient. So um, lots of different ways. Making predictions is huge. Based on an uh, amount of rainfall in an area, we can predict, predict where the areas are going to flood. So these are key questions that executives and managers want answered. And, and I want to add something. Please hang this poster up. A, it makes a great privacy shade if you have like windows that you don't want people to look through. <laughs> That's also good. But B, when you see this more and more, you'll begin to think a little bit differently. You know, it is hard to change overnight, but please hang it up. There's also a book, an electronic book that goes with it. It's a great little read, um, but yeah. 
Yeah. Everybody I, has one of these posters now. I actually have it as the backdrop on my desktop. I mean, it's the desktop of my computer. So it's in front of me literally all day, every day. 